I'm Mary Carr. I'm Christopher Robinson. This is Poetry Fix. What do we have today, Mary? We have Czesław Milosz, uh, the great Polish Nobel laureate who I used to go, he had these beautiful winged out eyebrows that stuck mm -hmm. out like bird's wings from his face in Cambridge and I used to go watch him eat mussels in this fish house where you could get a bowl of mussels for like four dollars. It's pretty creepy. <laughs> It was like seeing God for me. I love these poems. I'm going to read two because they're so short. Um, the first one is on prayer, and I'm somebody who prays. Chris I'm is not. a godless bastard. On Prayer by Czeslaw Milos, translated by Robert Haas. You ask me how to pray to someone who is not. All I know is that prayer constructs a velvet bridge, and walking it, we are aloft, as on a springboard, above landscapes the color of ripe gold transformed by a magic stopping of the sun. That bridge leads us to the shore of reversal, where everything is just the opposite, and the word is unveils a meaning we hardly envisioned. Notice I say we, there, every one, separately, feels compassion for others entangled in the flesh, and knows that if there is no other shore, we will walk that aerial bridge all the same. What you said a while ago about poets loving the world, I feel, is, is evident in this and in Stevens and in Neruda, in their focus on this, um, on to be, on is, right? This word is unveils a meaning we hardly envisioned. That it's that just somehow being alive. that existence um, is transcendent. And that whether you couch that in terms of a particular religion, or if you're a non-believer, in the case uh, here at the end of the poem. Yeah, that's what I like, is that he addresses, if, if there is no other shore, he, he doesn't say, and if you're dumb enough to think there is no right. other shore, he actually addresses it because all believers have moments of profound doubt, yeah. usually many a day. Hmm. I also wanted to read this other one about books, because as young writers, I think, you know, as Woody Allen says, when I die, instead of going on living through my work, I'd rather live in my apartment. Um, <laughs> And yet the books by Czesław Milos, translated by Robert Haas. And yet the books will be there on the shelves, separate beings that appeared once, still wet as shining chestnuts under a tree in autumn, and touched, coddled, began to live in spite of fires on the horizon, castles blown up, tribes on the march, planets in motion. We are, they said even as their pages were being torn out or a buzzing flame licked away their letters. So much more durable than we are, whose frail warmth cools down with memory, disperses, perishes. I imagine the earth when I am no more. Nothing happens, no loss. It's still a strange pageant, women's dresses, dewy lilacs, a song in the valley. Yet the books will be there on the shelves, well-born, derived from people, but also from radiance, heights. That is a beautiful poem. I love the power he gains from non-specificity in the women's dresses, mm. in the way that Haas can say um, the thing her father said that hurt her, what she dreamed. Right, you know? and this, of course, yeah. Miloš is translated by Robert Haas from Berkeley, who we've also poetry fixed. I'm Mary Carr. I'm Christopher Robinson. This is Poetry Fixed.